Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. For those of you new, I'm Jeanette from Boricua Sewing and Crafts. This video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I'm going to do double applique on this shirt. This is an old shirt that I have laying around and I figured let me just, um, you know, make it a little different. It's just a plain shirt that I got from Walmart a while back. Um, it does have a couple of stains on it stuff, had it for a while, but I figured why not? I'm going to give it a new look, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a double applique on this shirt. Now, the background of the applique, I like this pattern right here. It's a fabric that I think I picked up from Joann's, um, and it's really, really cute. Didn't know what I was going to do with it, but um, I figured, you know what? Usually when I get, um, you know, fabric and I don't know what to do, I just get half a yard and then I just keep it. And, and I'm glad I did because this is perfect. So this is going to be the background. I'm going to use this as the background of the um, applique. And then for the lettering of the applique, I'm actually going to use this light purple, okay? Because I think there's a little light purple on here. And I think this is really going to give it a cute new look on this shirt. Of course, with applique, also, I don't want any of this to be framed. So I'm going to be using the light heat and bond. So that way, none of my fabric uh, frays after I put it on. But before I do anything, I have to design the, the embroidery file that I'm going to use to make this shirt. Okay, so let's go over to Embrillus and I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. All right, guys, here we are at In Brilliance, and I want to show you guys exactly how I'm going to create the file, okay? Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to select my letters, all right? Now, I want to do the word mom. I'm going to keep it nice and simple. So, the way I do that is you're going to go over here to the text box, and then you're going to see all the way on your right-hand side, I am going to select my applique lettering. So let me scroll down a little bit and I'm gonna pick it. Let me pass it, did I pass it? No, I did not. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna do two and a half inches. There you go. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna put the, mom, the word mom on here. Okay, all right. Now, there's something that I wanna talk to you guys about uh, regarding the way that the file is set up right now, okay? What we're going to do is I'm going to click on here on the, the needle, okay, where I'm going to do the stitch simulator. And I want you to look at this bar that I am pointing to right here. As you can see, there's green, orange, blue. Then there's green, orange, blue, green, orange, blue. Now, the green is where you're going to place the first letter. The orange is going to be where you place the fabric for the first letter and it's going to tack it down. And then the, the blue is going to finish it off. So let's, I'm going to do the arrow and I'm going to run it. Now, as you notice, the green is going to show you where you're going to put the fabric on, right? There you go. Then you're going to take your piece of fabric for the letter M. You're going to put it on here. And then you're going to do the orange, and what it's going to do is it's going to tack down that fabric to hold that fabric in place. Then you're going to take it out of the machine, you're going to cut around it. And then what's going to happen is the blue is going to, it's like the final stitch on that letter, right? Now, then it's going to go to the letter O, and it's going to do the same thing. It's going to do the first, the, those three, those three co colors, you know, the same process, the same steps for the O. And then it's going to do the same steps for the M. However, though, I'm going to use the same fabric for the entire word, okay? For the whole word, I'm going to use that light purple. So I want to be able to just have the machine stitch out the word mom so I know exactly how to cut that, you know, how to cut one piece of fabric, then have the machine just tack down the whole fabric cut it all out, and then finalize it. So in order to do that, I have to do something that's called color sort, okay? So the color sort is right under here, 
and I'm making this bigger so that you can see, is you scroll over here and you see utility and right here you can select color sort. Okay, so I'm gonna select that and then I'm gonna push this back a little bit so that you can see. Now, right, right here, I'm gonna get this thing and it says design page has been reduced by six colors, which means that instead of it doing three, 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 which is nine steps altogether, now it's just going, you know, it took away six steps, so it's just going to be three. But in order for you to keep it that way, right, to, to want to use it where you're only going to use one tack, one placement, one tack down, and then one finalize, what you're going to do is you're going to save it. So I'm going to save this, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just give it the word mellow. Mellow sorted. I think I spelled that wrong sort let's do mellow sort and i'm putting that in my downloads files so i'm going to just save it now i'm not going to use this file because this file has all of these steps so i want a brand new one so now i'm going to open up a brand new screen and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to open up that file that i saved and remember i called it mellow sort there it is so i'm going to open this up Okay, now I want, I'm going to do this, the simulator up here and I want you to see what happens now. Here's the, here's the, the green and see how the green is doing all letters. Okay, that means now I can add my fabric. Now it's going to tack down all the letters to my fabric. And then I cut out my 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 letters and then finalize it i mean i'll show you how i do all this stuff but i just wanted to show you this because this is a pretty quick way for you to do a name if you're using the same fabric for everything right so it's like why take why remove this from your machine for every single letter when you could just remove it for the entire world word and just you know cut the the fabric and do it Easy pleasy, right? Okay, so I showed you this. Now, let's do the, the applique that goes behind it. Now, remember, this is the word, okay, that is an applique. Now, what I want to do is I want to put an applique, but I want it behind this. So, what I'm going to do is under utility again, I have um, a, pro, a module called Merly Patches. And Merly Patches gives me this this option which is add patch edge and here it has something that's called page wrap so I'm adding that now as you can see right here this actually has the edges that looks like a patch right but I really don't want that look I don't like that look okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you let's pay attention to the right hand side of the screen where I have my cursor now. Hold on, I just jumped that by mistake. Put that in the middle, okay. Now this is the section that I want you guys to pay attention to. In here, okay, not thread, sorry. Click the wrong thing. We're gonna hit interactive. Now, let me make this a little bigger so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. Here, there's two options, position and top stitch. What I want to do right here is I just want to remove top stitch. So when I do that, did you see how thin this came out? Okay, that's the stitch that I want. All right. Now, the thing is, remember, in Apple case, there's like kind of, three steps, right? You have your placement stitch, then you have your your um, knockdown stitch, and then it's your final stitch, right? Well, here, I don't really need a final stitch. I just really need the placement stitch and I need the um, tack down stitch. So let's go over here and I want you to pay attention to this side right here. Notice the, notice how this is. It says patch, right? So that means it's going to run this stitch. When it runs this stitch, what it's going to do is it's going to show you 
where the background fabric should be. Then I'm gonna put it on the shirt. But I need this stitch to run, a run, run again so that way it can tack down that, that fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I actually want to copy and paste it. So hold on. I guess what it is is here. See how it's highlighted? Let me push this back so that you guys can see. Okay, I have I have this highlighted here. Now I'm going to right click and right where it says copy. And then I'm going to right click again and I'm going to do paste. Now Let's see what this did right here. Move this up a little bit. Okay, because this is important. This is going to be the first thing that stitches out. This is the second. This is the third. This is not how I want the order to be. Okay? I need this to stitch out after this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. And I'm going to say move first so now you have patch patch and then you have the word now the patches all have the same color right as you can see they all have the same color so what i'm going to do is i'm going to highlight i have the first one highlighted right and i'm going to leave that that color but the second one I want to do a different color. I'm going to do, I don't know. Let's say I'm going to do, I'll do a, a green. There you go. All right. So let's run the, the uh, stitch simulator so that we can see how this is actually going to go now. All right. So that way you have a better idea. So on the top, here I go. And as you can see, this is where I'm going to put my background fabric down, right? So now I'm gonna take that purple fabric and I'm just gonna lay it across. Then what's gonna happen is it's going to stitch again. And when it stitches it down again, it's actually going to tack down the um it's going to tack down the fabric and then i can go ahead and i can just cut around it at that time if i want to okay then it's going to do the tack down stitch for the word see that then i put my fabric for my word right then it's going to tack it all down. And when it tacks it all down, that's when I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut out the extra fabric. And then this is going to finish it off. And then I'm done with my shirt. All right. So this is my actual final file. All right. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save it on the USB. Let's take it over to the machine and let's stitch it all out. But before I do that, I am going to print out this file, okay? I'm going to do a file print. And the reason why I do that, I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this file when I head over to the cutting table. Because this is going to save you guys some money on some fabric and also on some heat and bond. It's a little trick that I do, okay? So I'm going to print this out now. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you... Uh, where we're going to go from here. Okay, guys. I got the template printed out. And this is... I got my heat bond here. I got my fabrics. I'm going to put the shirt aside for now. Because we don't need the shirt right now. But I wanted to show you what I actually do. Now, the template, what it is, is it's actually going to show you the actual size of the, um, the embroidery. Right? So what I do is to save on fabric and all that kind of stuff, I usually take the fabric that I'm going to use and I cut around the template. That way I'm not like 
cutting a whole bunch of extra fabric and wasting fabric. Let me take this out. So I'm just going to take this, put it on here, okay? I got my little pinky, pinky shears here. And I'm just gonna cut around it. I mean, you don't have to like do the same exact, but you know, it just saves you some, okay? I should have actually <laughs> measured it all the way over here. I should have did like that, but that's okay. So I have this piece, all right? Now, I can put this fabric away, and I'll do that in a little bit, okay? Now I'm going to take this other piece of fabric that I have, and I'm gonna do the same thing, okay? There you go. All right, awesome. So, now I have my two pieces of fabric, where did I put it? There you go. And I can put away my extra fabric. And these are the fabric that I'm going to need heat and bond on, okay? So I'm gonna take my heat and bond, and of course I'm not gonna put the heat and bond all throughout, it's just, I just need as much for this portion right here. So I already kind of have a good amount from here to here, right? So I'm just gonna take some scissors. Don't use your fabric scissors, okay? I'm just gonna cut across from here. So I think this is a good amount for one, okay? More than enough for this, right? And now just put it on one of these and then so leave the same amount for the other one. So I will just cut you want to try to not waste, you know, how you're you're saving. Okay. So you don't want to waste anything. If you can help it. All right, so now what I'm going to do is because I have my heat and bond already done, you know, I'm going to put heat and bond on each of these fabrics, okay? All right, guys, I already have the iron a little warm. Now, the part with the temporary heat adhesive, and what I like to do is I like to make sure that I don't have any wrinkles in my fabric before I put anything on here. I'm just going to give it a quick iron, okay? Because if you have fabrics on it, you don't want to, like, mess up, okay? All right, so on the wrong side of the fabric, you're going to have the adhesive. I'm just going to put it on there, all right? And I'm usually going to put it this way, and then I'm just going to iron it on. You don't use steam. Don't use steam because this is adhesive. Okay, just a quick second. Now you don't peel it off right away either because you're gonna let this cool. Okay, so this is fine. See how quick? Got the adhesive all on there, so I'm fine. So I got this one done. All right, so now I'm gonna take my other piece of fabric and I'm just gonna iron it, get any wrinkles out because you don't want to do applique with wrinkle um, fabrics. You can see these edges are a little wrinkled, so I'm going to try to stay away from that because I don't want that to be in the actual design. It looks good. I'm just going to do that here. Yeah, it looks good. All right. Okay. I'm going to put this on here. For some reason, this looks lighter, but eh, that's okay. I kind of like the way this side looks. So I am going to place this on here. Now I'm going to iron it. 
Okay, you just leave it for a couple of seconds. And like I said, don't steam. Don't use steam. With the, the smoke that you see, if you see the smoke, that's just the, the heat of the iron. Okay, I did not steam anything. All right, so there. And then this is good. Okay, now we're going to let this cool. All right, now as you can see, this is already cooled. So let me show you what it looks like when you start to peel it off. See that shiny stuff? That's the adhesive, okay? So you're peeling off the paper. You're not peeling off the, sh the shiny stuff behind, all right? So now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to peel off the paper, and this is ready for the machine, okay? All right? The same thing with this. This hopefully should be cool by now. Is it? It's a little warm. And sometimes, you know, to, to, to hurry up the process, too, what you can do is go take this to a cold surface and just go like this, you know, and it can help a little bit to just speed up the uh, thing. See, now it's nice and cold. And same thing here. I'll take this. See the shiny? Leave the shiny on here and just peel off the paper. Make sure you peel it all off. Don't just, you know, don't leave any of the paper in there, okay? There you go. Got it all off. Perfect. All right, so now I have both of my fabrics ready. I have my um, file ready. So let's go over to the machine and I'm gonna show you exactly how we're gonna stitch this out, okay? Okay, guys, I have hooped my shirt, I use cutaway stabilizer behind it. As you can see too, I have like a stain right here. So it's like, ugh. but that's okay. I mean, this is gonna be a shirt I'm gonna be wearing around the house and I figured I would play around with the double applique. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll see if we can cover that. I don't know, we'll see. All right, so I got my file and I'm going to just bring you over to the machine now. All right, here we go at the machine. Um, I saved the file to the USB. I'm going to bring it up. Let me um, get this out of the way. It's a new design I was working on. Here we go. Okay. So, here is my applique design. All right. And I'm going to rotate it. I want it to look that way. And I'm going to hit and edit. Let's see how this turns out. Okay. So, of course... The first stitch is going to do, uh, the first stitch, of course, it's going to be your tack down, okay? And then um, all your letters and stuff like that. So I'm not going to pay too much attention to the colors. Whatever color is in the machine right now, I'm just going to roll with it because I don't want to be changing color threads. And there's a lot of colors in the, in the, um, the fabric that I'm going to use behind anyway. So I'm okay with that, okay? So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry too much about that. I'm just gonna use the, the thread colors that I have on there. I'm good with it. It'll it'll work. Okay. So what I do wanna do is um I'm gonna hit return. I do wanna do a scan because I love the scanning feature of this machine because I wanna make sure that the file is going to fit nicely on the screen. And I think it will, um, but you always want to double check. Yeah, and it's going to fit nicely. Okay, as you can see, plenty of room on the sides and everything. So we're good to go. All right, so the first one, um, what we're going to do also is I'm going to hit embroider. And one of the things that I'm going to use a lot on this machine is my stop, okay? So after each applique, after each one, I'm going to hit a stop so that we can take a look at it and talk about what happened, okay? So right now what it's going to do is it's going to do the background of the knockdown stitch, okay? And that is where I'm going to put the fabric with all of the... Um, the notions, okay, the sewing notions. This is gonna be my background, right? And that's where I'm gonna lay this, but I'm gonna let it sew 
so it can show me where the fabric should lay, okay? So we're gonna let that roll. And let me bring you a little closer so you can see. And I do have my machine at a little slow side. So. And I know you guys probably see little specks and stuff. Remember, this is an old, old shirt. Okay, so. This is, this is my background, okay? So this is where I'm going to place this, all right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this right on top of where it's stitched. I want to make sure that I don't see any of the stitch, stitch lines, okay? And now what I'm going to do, and it's nice and smooth, okay? And this is where I like using my chopsticks, okay? Remember what I say, never put your fingers behind there, okay? Because I want to make sure that this fabric is nice and smooth out. So now what I'm going to do is, once again, I'm going to hit the stop button, okay? The reason why I'm hitting that is because once this is done stitching, I want the machine to stop. So I'm going to hit that. Oops, let me hit it again. There you go. You want that little hand there. So now I'm going to hit unlock. I'm going to hit go. And what it's going to do is it's going to tack down that fabric, okay? And I kind of follow the needle and then I try to just smooth out the fat with my chopsticks because I don't want it to like bunch up. Okay, now there's one or two things you can do. I can take this out of the machine. I can cut around this if I want right now, or I could just have it go ahead and do the end. But to make it simple so that you guys have a good visual and also not to confuse or complicate things, we're gonna cut it out, all right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out of the machine, let's go to the cutting board and I'm gonna cut around the outline. Okay, guys, sometimes a lot of people kind of like doing this. I think it's okay. Sometimes it can be a little nerve-wracking. Now, on this, you want to cut as close to the stitches as you want, but you don't want to cut the stitches, okay? So you're going to want to leave a little bit of fabric over overhanging, okay? Some people leave a lot. Some people leave a little. There's no right or wrong. The style that I'm going for is kind of like a little distressed si uh, style. So I'm good with whatever. And remember, I, I put um, heat and bond, so it's not really gonna fray, okay? So we're just gonna cut around. go and this usually takes a little while because it, it depends how much edging you got to go you want to be careful also you don't want to cut your shirt So I'm a little sloppy. <laughs> That's okay though. I mean, I kind of like the originality though of it. I mean, it doesn't have to be. Let me see if I can get a better scissor. Sometimes people like these uh, scissors better for applique. And they do go a little bit better and smoother. Okay. 
Now I know some people are like super neat where they're cutting around it. Mine is a little bit on the jagged side, so, but it's all right. Okay, so as you can see, this is the outline, okay? And this is how it's gonna be. I mean, I'm gonna iron it after that. We're gonna put it on the heat press and it's gonna come out really, really nice. So now let's put this baby right back in the machine. Okay, guys, we are back at the machine. And now what I'm going to do is the next step where it's going to do the tack down stitch for the word mom. Okay. And I am going to hit the machine to go ahead and do it. And I'm also going to hit that, that stop sign because I want it to stop when it's done. Okay. Remember the little hand? Okay. So I hit the little stop. So now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to let that roll. Okay, so now, as you can see, it has the word mom on there, and it shows you the, place, the placement, excuse me, of where you're going to put the other fabric. Now, I'm going to, before I do the other step, I'm going to show you a little trick before I lay down this fabric. When you have like a letter O over here, you have to cut like inside of it, right? So what I usually do is I will lay the fabric down, okay? And then I kind of see where that little circle is going to be, right? So I'll lay it down and then I say, okay, well, this is a good placement for it. And the little circle is right underneath there, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my scissor and I'm just gonna cut a little bit and I just cut a little bit off, okay? Like make a little hole. There you go. So I have like a little hole in my fabric, right? So what I'm going to do with this hole is I'm going to make sure this hole is inside that space. That way, when I go to cut around it, all I got to do is take my scissor, put it in. I don't have to worry about cutting this by accident, okay? So this is here. Let's see. Yep. Perfect. 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 So I'm going to line this here, okay? Once again, I use my chapsticks um, because I don't want to hurt my fingers. I have everything in place exactly how I want it, and now I'm going to start the machine. And once you have like a couple of stitches, generally it's not going to mold it. That's okay, I mean. There you 
go. Here comes the O. And see how it's gonna go around it and see that little slit I put in there? It's gonna make it a lot easy. See, so when I go to cut this out, it's gonna be really easy because I already got a little slit in there. So I don't have to worry about accidentally cutting the fabric underneath. That's why I do that. Nice. Okay. So now we're going to go over to the cutting board and let's cut out this word. And I'm going to show you how great it is to do this. Okay. So here we are at the cutting table. Now I'm going to tell you something because I did this, the, the color sort, I'm only cutting all this once. If I didn't do that, I would be cutting the M then cutting the zero, the, the O, then cutting the M again. You know what I'm saying? You would be taking the item in and out of your machine several times. But because we did the color sort, I didn't have to do that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out my, my letters. Now I will tell you, some people like cutting applique. I personally am not a fan of too much applique because I think this is very time consuming. I understand that it does save on a lot of stitch work. It does do that, you know? But I don't know, it's just taking this in and out of the machine. It can be kind of a pain. But hey, everybody has their own favorite, right? So, I mean, applique is okay, I guess, but Sometimes it's, it's not my thing, <laughs> you know, so, um, but I do like doing it sometimes because you can use different materials, you know, with applique, you can use this with leather. If you want to use leather, you can do this with fabric. You can do this with heat transfer vinyl. Some people use the sparkle heat transfer vinyl. Um, they use it, you know, for the kids' shirts and stuff. You know, they use the, the numbers. Now, look, see how I have this in here? All I have to do is just snip inside and see, much easier. And I don't have to worry about accidentally cutting the, the fabric that's underneath. It makes it a lot easier for you. Okay, so I'm going to have to move this around here. Oh, taken care of here. And the thing too with um, cutting applique, you really do have to, well, it depends on the look that you go for. I mean, I kind of like the crooked distress look. Some people like their stuff to look really um, aligned. You know, you just got to, and, and I'm sure in time you're going to learn about how close to cut your fabrics and stuff like that. So, you know, the fabric to the, uh, to the stitches. Because remember, you never want to cut the stitches. You're, you're just looking to cut the fabric. But, you know, I mean... You know, applique's time consuming too. I mean, a lot of people think, oh, you know, it's it's quick. It really isn't um, because you have to cut the the fabric, and it, that takes time. And you, this is not something that you want to cut in a rush because you don't want to accidentally cut stitches and stuff. So, um, and depending on. 
the appliques. Some, some appliques are more details than others, you know. Um, especially if you're doing like words and you have a lot of letters. That's why I just said, let me just do mom. Mom is just three letters. Um, and you can work with that. Not that bad. And as you can see, I still have a lot of maneuvering to do because there we go. And I still have the bottom of this M that I have to go around. There you go. All right. So now let's take this down to the machine. And let's do the final stitch, and then let's put this in the heat press and see what the outcome is, okay? Okay, guys, we are at the last step, okay, of embroidery, because then after this, I'm going to put this on the press machine, okay? But as you can see, this is how it came out. I, I kind of like it. It looks really good. So now it's just the final stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and say go ahead and do it. Hit yes, and let's see the end of this stitching. Okay, this finished embroidering now, but um, I want to show you a mistake that has been made. Now, remember when I was cutting the applique, I said, don't cut too close to the stitches. That's not what you want to do. Well, I actually did it in two places on here because I want to show you what happens when you do cut too close to the stitches. Let's go to the cutting table, okay, because I want to show you because... If you know what happens, then you'll know how to avoid it. It's very, very important that you guys understand why there are certain things that you should not do, okay? Now, I want you guys, and let me, I'm going to get a pointer here because I want to show you guys, okay? See how this is? This is all tacked down. It looks really nice and even. You can see the stitch. Look at the O. The M here looks pretty good too, okay? Look at the O. Oh, you see anything funny? Look right here. See how the stitch is gone? Look what happened. I cut too close to the stitches. See? And right here, I cut too close to the stitches. See, it's open. I don't know if you see. Let me, let me put it so that you guys can see it. Because I want you guys to see. See? See? Now, I am going to heat, I'm going to use heat and bond, so it won't be that big of a deal. It's still going to stay on. But you want to try to avoid that because what you want is you want that nice, clean stitch like you have right here. See how on the end you have the stitches and you see it all the way around, right? When I hit the iron, okay, 
I want you guys to notice that you're not going to see the clean stitch on here, okay, like you do on the M and on this M. You're going to notice that it's going to be a little bit funky on here. Now, I was going to do this on my heat press, but I actually want to use my iron because I do know a lot of people don't have a heat press. So I want to do this on an iron so you guys can see um, how I do it. Okay. I'm going to take this off the hoop. Excuse Mello. Probably got some mail or something. Okay, I am here on my little ironing board. I have Teflon sheet, and it's not going to take long because you saw how quick I I um I ironed the uh, heat and bond to the fabric. It's going to be the same thing. So that's why I figured, why am I going to do the heat press? Turn on the heat press for all this when I can easily just do this. I'm just gonna move it back and forward just a couple of times, that's all. And then let's take a look at it, and I want us to look at the O. Let's see how that comes out. Did, did it actually, does it look funky? Does it look all right? Here we go, all done. All right, so let's take this right back to the cutting board and let's take a look at it again, okay? Okay, guys, I just finished ironing it. As you can see, it's nice and flat, okay? It looks really nice. But if you look on here, you don't see those top stitches right on here, okay? Let me just go a little bit closer, see? See how the M is right here? You see all the top stitches here? But then, like, right here, you don't see it. That's because it ironed right over it, okay? Because I cut too close. I cut too close. Everywhere else on here looks okay. Here, I think I may have cut a little bit too close too. But that's okay. I mean, hey, I like showing you guys errors just like, um, you know, just like I like showing you guys success. I like showing you guys errors too. Okay. So, guys, um, of course, I'm going to have to go inside the shirt and I will cut the uh, stabilizer. Okay, I've got stabilizer in here, and I'll just cut around it. You know, don't cut it towards the st stitches. Okay, so that's done. And then this is finished. Okay, I've got my old shirt, and um, put a little design on there. Okay, put a little design. Now, I know it's a little on the small. I would have preferred it to be big, but I just wanted to do a demo of the double applique. This is fun to do, it really is. It looks really cute. I really like the way that came out. I love it, looks nice. So anyway guys, hope you like this video and that you learned something new. Um, you know, if you guys are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I'm all about embroidering, sewing, and other crafts. And I host Embroidery Happy Hour every Friday at eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So, guys, you know, this is a really neat thing to do and try out. It's really fun. And you can really make clothes your own. I mean, it's it's a really neat thing to do. So, guys, like I said, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I mean, it helps the channel a lot, okay? So, I will talk to you guys later. Happy sewing and happy embroidering. Bye.